Hi everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, uh, of COVID-5. Uh, this sixth ses session of COVID-5 uh, will be started. Uh, and our first speaker is uh, Theodora uh, Kiro uh, Kirova from University of Latvia. Latvia. Uh, she's, uh, she is going to talk about ultra high precision uh, right by atomic localizations using static waves and optical uh, vertices. Uh, so uh, please, uh, Theodora, thank you for your yeah. coming to. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much. I will try to share now my screen. Uh, let me know if it's working. Yes. Uh, oops. Um, so hi everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here at COVID, um, COVID um, for a second time, and um, thank you for uh, accepting my uh, talk, uh, talk as a short talk. So uh, I will talk about our work that we did with uh, some colleagues from China and uh, from Iran and from Lithuania about how we can um, uh, precisely or not precisely localize um, revert atoms using standing wave and optical vortices. So um, just in the beginning to uh, remind everyone again why revert atoms are int uh, so interesting, uh, because they have uh, uh, large sizes, um, small binding energies, also very long radiative lifetimes um, of the order of microseconds. Uh, also, they have big uh, dipole matrix elements, which means that they interact um, uh, very sensibly with uh, electric fields, and also they interact between themselves with dipole-dipole interaction. And due to all these properties, um, revert atoms are very interesting for applications in many body effects, uh, autocode plasmas, condensed matter, and quantum information. Uh, also, another useful um, uh, uh, phenomenon in uh, Rydberg atoms is the so-called uh, dipole blockade, um, uh, which was um, predicted by Lukin, and then a lot of uh, experimental groups, for example, like the one in the PRPS group in 2009 have um, showed it uh, experimentally. So what is dipole blockade? Uh, imagine that you have a Rydberg atom, which is connected to uh, intermediate state and also to ground state. And imagine that you want to excite it with your laser. However, due to the dipole-dipole interaction, uh, your laser is actually uh, off resonant and it cannot excite your, um, your river state due to which uh, this excitation is impossible. Uh, and this is what is called uh, dipole-dipole um, blockade. So for example, in this experiment in Pierre's, uh, Pierre's Pierre group, um, when they keep the the atoms at a big, bigger distance, uh, they can see single atom excitation and also double atom excitation, but when they bring the atoms together, then uh, the double atom excitation is um, uh, subdued, which means that we can observe the dipole blockade. Uh, also another uh, useful phenomenon is the, the so-called anti-blockade in which you can actually compensate for the double-double um, interaction shift. Uh, using uh, the tuning of your laser. And um, this is um, you know, some work by um, uh, in, uh, in um, uh, Vitamilo's group from uh, 2020, just to see that um, when the dipole depot interaction is compensated um, by, um, in this case, he's using other transfects, so by the Rabi frequency, uh, then uh, the double excitation um, is actually possible. Uh, another, uh, another useful uh, um, phenomenon which is um, adequate for, for what I will be speaking about is uh, uh, EIT or electromagnetically induced transparency. And uh, already a lot of speakers talked about it, but just to remind everyone, uh, basically uh, the first uh, experimental uh, realization is in the lambda scheme. So uh, you have uh, a pro field and a stronger uh, coupling field and due to uh, interaction, uh, due to um, 
um, interference between those two fields, um, it happens so that uh, the, the pro field becomes transparent, the, uh, the medium becomes transparent for the pro field, and you can actually see uh, transmission of the pro field uh, when the coupling field is turned on. And um, theoretically, uh, EAT can be explained by the creation of a, uh, of a dark state, which is combination of the two ground states. Um, and the condition for EAT is that um, um, the, there should be some certain condition, certain condition between uh, the coupling field and the, the tunings um, uh, and the, um, um, uh, sorry, and the spontaneous emissions in, in the system. Uh, so uh, to go to, um, after this introduction, just to go to the work that we have done, theoretically, uh, the first uh, scenario that we looked at is uh, how to localize uh, Rydberg atoms uh, using a standing wave. So um, um, we have um, a Rydberg atoms arranged in a so-called ladder scheme. So you have ground state, um, middle state, and, and, Rydberg, and Rydberg state. Uh, the first step of the ladder is um, interacting with a traveling wave pro field, and the second step of the ladder is interacting with a standing wave field. Um, in this situation, uh, we can write uh, the Hamiltonian of the system. It, continue, uh, it consists of uh, the unperturbed atomic Hamiltonian, uh, the atom field uh, Hamiltonian, and also, of course, the dipole dipole interaction between. Um, uh, uh, between the Rydberg states. Um, also, uh, with this Hamiltonian, uh, my colleagues have derived this analytical expression for the steady state solution of the Rydberg uh, population. Of course, it depends on the position X because um, we have uh, the coupling field is a standing wave. And also we have, which is important, this parameter S, which describes uh, the energy shift to the Rydberg state due to uh, the dipole dipole interaction with other atoms, which are beyond uh, the blockade radius. My colleagues also derived an uh, equation uh, how this S looks like in terms of the parameters of the system. Uh, and we have um, a parameter theta, which basically shows us if uh, the system is. Um, uh, if the distance between the atoms is more is uh, smaller or, or bigger than um, than the dipole gate radius, so uh, if you want to achieve localization, that means that um, the Rydberg uh, population should be equal to one. And uh, for this to happen, we need um, the condition delta s minus s equals zero. And then actually, um, this could happen in two cases either at the nodes of, of, of the coupling field, or uh, we, can also, we can also say that it happens at, at all cases. Uh, so depending on that, depending on uh, how the energy, the river level um, energy shift induced by the dipole dipole interaction is compensated um, by the coupling field tuning, we have two anti-blockade regimes, uh, the partial anti-blockade in which, um, this compensation happens only at the nodes of the field and full anti-blockade when um, this happens at, at all points. Um, so we have uh, made calculations for, for two um, different Rydberg states. One is the 60S1 half and one is the 30S1 half. They have different lifetimes. And um, uh, the 60S1 half is, is, is uh, longer lived. And we have calculated um, what is the time for which um, the system um, reaches a stable uh, steady state situation. And so we have two, two times uh, for each of those states. And then we have plotted um, the, um, the dependence of um, this time for reaching the steady state um, as a function of k. And k is the ratio between the um, the coupling field strength and, and the probe field strength. And um, we can see that in the case of full anti-blockade or partial anti-blockade, uh, we can get different situations um, 
uh, for which um, in order to, to reach uh, the steady state, we have to have a certain K number um, for in the system. So we're basically trying to find the best parameters in which um, uh, in which we will uh, reach this um, localization. Uh, so uh, the important the important points here are these green points, in which um, depending on the k we can get the the time that we need. Um, and knowing the parameters of um, of k that we need. Uh, for the system, we can calculate the steady state uh, red bear population, and we can see as a function of the distance, and we can see in which case we get the, uh, the localization. So again, we can do this for the different uh, states, uh, 30, 60s one half and 30s one half, and we can also do it in the case of uh, different parameter etc. and in the case of full interval cage and, and, and partial interval cage. And we see that uh, the best case for reaching this localization uh, is this one, uh, especially in the case of uh, partial anti-blockade. So uh, if we use a full anti-blockade, then we can get uh, full width half maximum of the localization to 0.6 nanometers. And for the parameters that we're using, and in the case of partial anti-blockade, we can um, get even smaller. Um, full width half maximum to um, 0.56 nanometers. And um, uh, uh, to continue last with the case minutes. of. Yeah. Sorry, last three minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, to continue to the case of using opt optical vortices for localization. Uh, we use the same scheme, but instead of standing wave uh, in the second step of the ladder, we have a optical vortice, which looks like this. And um, uh, in this case, uh, we can show that depending again on the parameter K, uh, when K is really big, which means that we have a really uh, strong coupling field, uh, we can get a very small localization uh, with the full width uh, half maximum uh, four nanometers for L equals one. And uh, if we increase the L number of the optical field um, to five, for example, then um, this localization becomes worse. Um, and finally, um, so what I showed you before was a 2D localization. Finally, we can also get 3D localization uh, if we apply um, a spatial modulated uh, two photon detuning. Uh, which is uh, like a sine a function. And then in this case, um, depending again on the K number, uh, we can get a, um, a good localization. And again, uh, it depends on whether we have partial amplification or, or full amplification uh, or, um, or the partial amplification um, condition is broken. So this just shows us that uh, this underbulk gate condition is really important um, in order to um, reach a good localization. So finally, to conclude, um, we have theoretically um, proposed uh, different scenarios, and we have done some calculations showing that uh, using uh, um, standing waves or optical uh, vortices, we can um, we can get to nanometer or sub nanometer scales localization depending on full or anti uh, or full or partial anti blockade regimes. And in the cases of optical vortices, we can also get a 2D or a 3D localization. And I would like to thank the Cost Action Quantum Technologies with the record atoms for um, basically supporting my um, research. Uh, thank you for the attention. Oh, thank you for nice presentation. Uh, is there a questions? One more question from Stabilized Sevinchli. Is there a real interaction for the case of 30 seconds? It's a practically non-interacting, right? Is it? Mm, uh, let me see. You mean uh, you mean for this one? Well, um, I'm not sure I understand the, the question, but basically... Uh, third state. Um, uh, 
basically we are in the state 30 30s 30 30 uh -huh, for this one uh so um, this one is um it's not so stable i mean the six days one half is metastable this one is not so stable that's why we don't get so good in um, localization we get we get this case and it's not it's not working so well so it's really important that the, the upper state is stable Is there any questions? So, thanks again to Theodora Kirova. Mm -hmm. and, Thank you. Uh,